Phase 3 is just around the corner and it's time to start looking over our preview best in slot as we head into the new 20 man Sanctum Temple raid. Every video that comes out before the actual release should be taken with a grain of salt as there are so many things that are unknown. And as we saw in Scarlet Monastery, Blizzard is not afraid to toss in some unexpected gear changes in level up dungeons. With that said, part of the reason we want to go over our gear set now is so that we can start preparing ourselves as early as possible. At least half of the gear in any pre raid best in slot list you'll be able to farm right now. In this video, we'll be going over two gear sets along with reasonable options if a piece is hard to obtain. One set will be your standard run of the mill agility set, while the second one will be a more spell power oriented set. Keep in mind that we may or may not have access to BRD, which will influence whether or not you have access to certain pieces and their shots. Starting off with the agility set. Here is a full overview of the set. As you can see, we'll still run quite a few phase 2 pieces while still having room to optimize our gear before heading into the raid. Starting off with the helmet, there is no question about it, we'll be running the crafted leatherworking helmet from Nomer for the raw stats and the on use effect. For the neck, you'll still be using the neck from the quest item from the last boss of Nomer. If you haven't received it yet, you can pick up the level 48 version of Sentinel's Medallion as an easy alternative. For shoulders, we'll run Trox Slayer's Pauldron as there are no other option that's even close. For the cloak, we'll want to run Blisterbane Wrap or Dark Fathom Cape. As they're both BOE, if you have a hard time getting your hands on one, you can pick up an Off Agility Cloak or the Dark Veil Cape from PRD. For the chest, we'll pick up the Fungus Shroud Armor from Rodden. Alternatively, you can go for an Off Agility Chest or stick with the Blazewing Breastplate. For our bracers, we'll want to pick up the level 50 version of the Wars and Gulch Bracers. And if you're not exalted, you can run with Deep Fury Bracers or simply stay with your Experimental Aim Stabilizers. For gloves, Void Touch Leather Gloves will be the best option on very short fights. For longer fights, the cooldown offers limited value and will be on par with Fingers of Accuracy. Blight Leather Gloves, however, could be the gloves offering the most value, especially if you're running Aspect of the Lion. For our belt, Dark Vision Girdle and the Honored Reputation Belt from Arathia Basin are basically equivalent, so if you have either one, you're set. For our legs, we run off Agility Legs, and if they're too expensive or in short supply, Nimble Trip Runner Dungeries will be your second best option. For boots, we head into Maraudon to pick up the Albino Croc Scale Boots. I wouldn't worry too much about other options as they are rather easy to get. But it's worth mentioning, you will probably get Sandstalker's Ankle Guards at some point while leveling in Sulfurag, which are not too far off the biz option. For our rings, we'll want to pick up the Blackstone Ring from Princess in Marauden, as well as Mason's Fraternity Ring from the quest in Sulfurag. Blackstone Ring will of course be in high demand, so you can pick up an off agility ring until you get yours. For trinkets, we'll stick with Avengers Void Pearl or Gyromatic Experiment 420B, depending on what we already have. In the second slot, we'll run Devil's Star Eye from the level 50 Hunter specific questline. If you average out the 150 attack power over its cooldown duration, it offers 25 overall attack power. But of course, since we can combine it with other cooldowns like Rapid Fire and the on use helmet, it'll offer far more value than static attack power would. Not to mention that we can feign death to swap trinkets after the on use effect is over. For melee weapons, we'll still want to run with two one handers, assuming we won't be melee weaving. Sentinel's Blade in one hand and an off agility weapon in the other. There are two handers that grant slightly more agility, but that is more than made up for by having two 15 agility enchants instead of one enchant with 25 agility. And putting up double brilliant wizard oil on our weapons will be absolutely nuts. For our range weapon, we'll want to go with the new STV crossbow. It's honestly not that much better than the Gnome Rigan option, so if you really don't want to PvP for your PvE biz, I wouldn't worry about it. Alright, let's move on to the spell power set. I was hoping that spell power would lose some value in phase 3, and that could very well still be the case depending on the runes we get. But with the teaser rune we got in the announcement, spell power gains even more value than in phase 2. And as such, preparing for that outcome is not a bad idea. Here is a quick snapshot overview of the set we'll be using heading into Sunken Temple. Let's go over the pieces that differ in this set from the last. In the helm slot, we'll still be running the crafted leatherworking helmet, but depending on how well we scale with spell power in phase 3, it could absolutely be worth to feign that swap into the spell power goggles extreme plus when the helmet is on cooldown if you have engineering. For our chest, we'll swap to the irradiated robe for the spell power and crit. 
For our wrist, it will be between the cloth and leather Warsong bracers. As with the Phase 2 tuning, the leather ones would still come out on top, but with lock and load in Phase 3, that could very well change. For our gloves, we'll run Void Touch Leather Gauntlets, which is the inlay version for that 10% damage buff, so we can snapshot our Serpent Sting on pull. For our waist slot, we'll run Banthog Sash if we have access to BRD, and if not, we run Volatile Concoction Belt. For our legs, we'll try to pick up the Spellshock Leggings. But with how many people will be spamming Sulfur Rack on launch, it shouldn't be too difficult to get your hands on a pair. For our second ring slot, we'll go for Songstone of Ironforge if BRD is available, and if not, we'll go with the Sulfur Rack Quest Ring. For our trinkets, we'll run Miniaturized Combustion Chamber or Invoker's Void Pearl along with Devil's Our Eye. For our weapons, we'll run our Phase 2 options, namely Glimmering Gizmo Blade and Dagger of Willing Sacrifice. For our ranged weapon, the STV crossbow should add slightly more value to the spell power build, so try to pick that up if you can. Of course, take things here with a major grain of salt. These builds will be the pre-raid best in slot with the information we have right now, but things could change very rapidly in Season of Discovery and may be very different on day one of the patch. I'll leave updates in the comments to keep you up to date if anything changes after the release of this season. I'll be releasing a bunch of Season of Discovery guides primarily focusing on Hunters. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.